Hello everyone, welcome back to London. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in tech coverage. My, my name is Dave Vellante, and we're here in a special program that we've constructed. It's the day before the AWS London Summit, and we wanted to come and talk to some customers, some executives, some startups, and really dig into what's going on in, in public sector. Chris Heyman is here. He's the director of UK and Ireland public sector for AWS. Chris, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for inviting me, it's great to be here. Yeah, so you guys have a special public sector, healthcare, pre-day going right. on downstairs. Mm. What's that all about? Yeah, so we've obviously got the main summit tomorrow, expecting about 12,000 people, which is phenomenal. Mm. Uh, today, though, we're going to do something with one of our uh, special industries, which is healthcare. So we've invited a number of customers and executives along for that today to learn more about the cloud, how they can get going with the cloud and get you know start adopting at pace. So I believe you spoke with EMIS a bit earlier on. So EMIS is a... Yeah. Uh, supply to the NHS, but also people like NHS Digital and so on who are adopting the platform. So that's what today's all about. So healthcare is one of those sectors that's ripe for disruption. Mm -hmm. It really hasn't been you know, disrupted in a big way and digitized and it's starting. Yeah. But the challenge is how do you balance the cost of healthcare? Everybody's sensitized to that with the quality of yeah. care. And so that's what really the problem that sure. you're trying to solve. How does AWS in the cloud help solve that problem. Yeah, I think across the public sector really, not just with the healthcare, but mm. you know, one of the things organizations are trying to do is reduce that large legacy footprint of infrastructure right. and really deliver against their mission, whether it be patients or citizens or whatever it may be. A uh, good example in the, in the case of the healthcare is um, we're working with a part of the NHS called the Business uh, Services Authority, and they have a large call center and that was a really you know, costly experience having traditional call center set up. So they've used our Connect pl uh, platform, our call center platform, and also um, some uh, voice technology uh, called Lex. And they're able to reduce, um, th they stood it up in about three weeks, it was a phenomenal effort, and they reduced their call volume by 42%. So basically getting the computers to answer some of the really easy queries which of course meant uh, that some of the tougher call center queries went to the actual humans and the call center handlers. So, you know, those sort of things I really think impact the bottom line for, for the NHS and save some costs, but really help them to innovate as well for, for their patients and citizens. So, Let's stay in healthcare for a second. So NHS has a, 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 a nearly half a billion pound initiative to modernize. Mm -hmm. So if, had they asked me, they didn't ask me, <laughs> but had they asked me, I'd say, well, part of that should be to get rid of the heavy lifting. Sure move to the cloud <coughs> and then really try to r transform your labor force mm -hmm. to focus on more value-added areas yeah, to, exactly, to yeah. help to solve bigger problems. Is that essentially what's happening? Yeah, 100%. So the, the contact center <coughs> query, you know, the, the people that are now answering the phones aren't doing those sort of mundane queries mm -hmm. where it's, you know, it's going to take four to six weeks. It's more, you know, transferring that, you know, that to the computer and letting the humans do the heavy lifting. So I think that's you know certainly one thing, but I think it's also enabling these organisations to really be closer to their citizens and to their patients as well. Um, if we look at organisations like in the local authority space, like Ellsbury Vale, they're also using voice technology with Alexa to enable citizens to answer queries like, you know, who is my councillor, or to update ba various things within their sort of council record. And so obviously public sector organisations love that because they've now got this unique touch point with a citizen at scale, whereas they would never have been able to do that uh, previously. So that's a kind of a really good, you know, close engagement for them. So you hear the bromide, uh, people say data is the new oil, it's, yeah. the, it's, the, it's the new natural resource. We actually <coughs> think data is more valuable than, mm -hmm. than oil because you, you can only use oil in one place. You know, yeah. <laughs> data you can use many, many places. So data becomes I increasingly Im important. And the, but the problem that most traditional companies have is their, their data is locked in silos, mm -hmm. it's hardened 100%. into an application. And so, so how are you guys uh, attacking that problem? What do you see uh, as trends in the customer base in terms of being able to have sort of a unified data model and what role does the cloud play there? Yeah, I think it's a really good question. So there's a number of things that we're doing. First of all, we're very passionate about public data sets. So we host a number of public data sets like Landsat imagery mm. and these sort of things. Um, you know, fundamentally, we believe that data has gravity. So, you know, if we're able to host and provide this data at scale for researchers and so on, that has tremendous, huge benefit. Um, but you're right about public sector organisations and those silos. Um, a good example where we've we've worked is with Transport for London. Obviously, if you want to get in and around the city of London, typically you go to tfl.gov.uk, which runs on AWS, 
and you'll say, right, I want to get from you know, Farringdon to Liverpool Street. And that's all kind of running on top of AWS. But the really cool thing is they've opened up all that information. So they don't have to develop those apps themselves. They're effectively crowdsourcing the development of those apps. So they've got some 4,000 developers now working against all this data. Uh, Deloitte recently did a study. They reckon it's going to um, generate economic benefits of 130 million pounds per annum just by making this real-time data available. Um, but so, so you're gaining unique business insights, but not only that, you've got organizations like CityMapper who can commercialize that data, develop apps and sell those apps um, on behalf of, you know, you know to, to the community and so on. So you've got that double bubble of SME engagement, but also the uh, public benefit as well. Right. So it's really cool. It, now, years ago, uh, in a past life, I had an opportunity when I worked for IDC, the mm -hmm. research company, to run the government business. Mm -hmm. And when I went around and talked to the, the heads, military heads, the heads of agencies, there was a common theme. They were trying to close the gap between uh, public sector and commercial. Yeah. And they never quite could get there. The cloud seems to me, mm -hmm. Chris, to be changing that. I mean, the, to me, the CIA deal in 2013 was a seminal moment for just the cloud and AWS you know, specifically. But Increasingly, you're seeing innovation. Yep. Uh, it's still very difficult because yep. you get turnover in, in agencies and administrations and so forth. Um, but what are you seeing in terms of, of those trends? Are, are you seeing public sector <coughs> organizations leaning in, modernizing, and, and again, what role does the cloud play there? Yeah, 100%. I think you're absolutely right. It is, it is a unifier in that sense. Um, we worked with, you know, we're moving mission systems to the cloud now with our customers. Uh, we worked with uh, Driver Vehicle Standards Agency, so mm -hmm. they're responsible for making sure our cars are roadworthy in the UK. Uh, they migrated their entire platform, which supports some 30,000 small businesses, to AWS in 10 weeks. So it's amazing what public sector organizations are able to achieve with the pace of the cloud. And a lot of it starts with experimentation. You know, that's the great thing is that you can try something. If it doesn't work, you can turn it off and you haven't lost anything. But that, that pace of being able to move even mission systems to the cloud is happening in public sector across the board. And I mentioned the CIA before, sorry to be the American sort of parachuting sure. in. I mean, it's, a, it's obviously a, a bias that I have. I'm working on my accent. But, um, <laughs> but, but, but the CIA was, was significant because everybody in the early days was so concerned about security. The, he, the head of IT from the CIA stood up last year at the DC Public Sector Summit and said, my worst day of security in the cloud is better far better than my client yeah. server ever was. Yeah. So what about security concerns? Yeah. Have they abated? Uh, are, they st are they still there? How is that evolving? Well, I think, first of all, it's absolutely right that public sector organizations are 100% laser focused on security. Mm. But the good news is that we are too. You know, it's job zero for us. It's absolutely everything that we do and live and breathe by. Um, and I think we've demonstrated that in a number of ways. I mean, first of all, just the way in which we operate our physical infrastructure and everything that we do at a physical pace, but then above the layer with the kind of the things that our customers are responsible for, um, we have a sh something called a shared responsibility model. So their responsibility for uh, kind of everything above the physical infrastructure. But we provide the tools that they just never would have been able to get access to in a, in a physical world. You know, I'd ask CIOs in public sector organizations, do you know every server that you have? You know, just things like that. And they'll just be like, no, I've got no idea. But with the cloud, you have that visibility. You can see every single thing that's happening in the environment. So you get far more visibility and control than you ever, was, ever were able to in a physical world. So I think that's the first thing. And obviously, everything that we do around certification, attestations, around ISO certification, all the reporting and so on that we do to, um, to assure our customers that we do a good job at that level as well. Uh, Ministry of Justice actually came out and said, you can be more secure in the cloud than on-premises, and you have to focus on those areas where you're not in the cloud. Um, so I think that was a huge testament by the UK government to say, actually, this is this is secure and this is fit for purpose, which is which is good. One of the other th things I've observed about just technology adoption in general, it, it you know Silicon Valley is unique, obviously, mm -hmm. and, and, and but you know outside of Silicon Valley, maybe technology adoption you know 20 years ago occurred more slowly. It seems like cloud adoption is very much consistent yeah. across the globe. I wonder if you could talk about that, but then specifically public sector adoption yeah. of the cloud. Do you see this very similar sort of cadence f from you know, US 
rest of the world. Yeah, it's, I do. And I, I think, you know, we're, we're doing a fantastic job in the UK, actually, a really fantastic job. I talked about some of the stuff we're doing around AI and machine learning. You know, some of these things are really uh, leading edge. And if you spoke to Emis earlier, they're investigating things like blockchain for their types of solutions. So these sort of things are really pushing the boundary. Um, but paramount to all of that is this idea that you can experiment and try things. So there's no longer there's a kind of a there's no mm -hmm. longer a disparity around these sort of things. Fundamentally, when you when you log into the console, you've got access to 165 different things, and you can get going whether you're in the UK, whether you're in Canada, or or in North America. So our customers are picking these things up and and accelerating the pace, which is which is fantastic. Trying all different types of things and workloads. Okay, if I were to ask Alexa, what's going to happen with Brexit? <laughs> What would, it, what would it tell me? <laughs> well, I think first and foremost, you know, f the way we think about it is, it's just business as usual for us. You know, it's a fairly mundane answer, but fundamentally, um, you know, organizations still need to adapt, they still need to transform, they still need to evolve, and that's where we're helping and we're leaning in. You know, we're helping them with some of their EU exit programs around tooling and processes and things like that. Um, but they're still keen to adopt cloud at pace, which is, which is awesome. So come back to uh, the the session that you guys are running downstairs. I, mm -hmm. I I saw some sort of descriptions of it, and I think there were three areas of focus: the the public payers, the healthcare providers, and the publicly funded research organizations. Yeah. is kind of what you guys are focused on yeah. today. So maybe <coughs> close there and give us a vision for where you see uh, AWS public sector in the UK and yeah, Ireland going. I, I think this <coughs> we're obviously healthcare is a really fast growing vertical for us which is fantastic but across the board demand has never been greater which is phenomenal mm -hmm. and um, we're we're really pushing the boundaries of of what can be achieved. Uh, we're working with you know I talked about some of the public sector organizations with working with but you know partners like EMS but also uh, small businesses as well as a great example working with a company called Adzuna, which provides job search functionality. Uh, they run on AWS and they won a contract for um, Job Center Plus, which is part of our Department of Work and Pensions. So it's not just the direct engagement we have with our customers, but it's also all the partners that we're working with to enable that end-to-end -end functionality, which is, which is really good. So we're doing a lot, lots of work in that space and I, I can see more and more organizations, not just customers and customers, but also partners, technology providers coming to talk to us. Uh, and then across the spectrum in, in healthcare, whether it's uh, suppliers to the NHS or at the NHS themselves and individual trusts and, and hospitals and so on that are kind of using our technology. So it's a real broad mix and spectrum of, uh, of adoption. Outstanding, Chris, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Thank I mean, you. we're seeing the, the growth of AWS, uh, AWS is actually astounding. $30 billion run rate company growing at 40 plus percent a year. But more importantly, you're starting to see not only region expansion, but you're seeing expansion into specific verticals and ecosystems forming startups, and you, you guys are doing a great job of attracting these. Yeah. So thanks very much for coming thanks. on. Thanks, appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thanks for All right, time. keep it right there, everybody. This is Dave Vellante on theCUBE. We're right back, right after this short break.